I want to tell you about the, um, the two, actually, two new tools that can be also used um, for your products. Just a little bit... Um, Yeah, it will uh at what's what's going to help you. Just what is the process I'll tell a little bit about the company. Setinkov Digital is the company that was built by Lektinkov, which is one of the famous Russian entrepreneurs, and the other shareholders are Bang Goldman Sachs. So we are specializing on building advertising platforms in mobile and web. So we are a technology company and thanks. It works finally. So, I just want to say that the millennials are the new customers for the luxury business. Uh, so, the people who were born between 1980 and 2000 are the new audience for you. So, for sure, if you look at Europe, you can see that the main buyers for fashion industry, usually people in their 40s or even 50s, but in Russia you can look and you can see that the image is completely different. We have a, a lot of young professionals, not only oligarchs or their wives, but we also have a lot of young professionals that earn this money. And all these people, they are really obsessed, and we have to follow them into the channels that they are, we are naturally, they are naturally consume. I want to talk a little bit about the new approaches, which is really unusual for luxury business. So the old approach is when you follow the content. So you know that if there is a magazine about fashion and if this magazine about the luxury homes you advertise in it. And if you know the website is about fashion or some other brands, you also advertise in this. And the same situation with the fashion box. But the new approach is that you have to follow the audience. So no matter where the audience is going. Uh, and where are they going? They go in the social networks. Actually, I just read the research that Four Seasons, it's a luxury hotel chain, you know for sure. The study was conducted a couple of months ago, and the wealthy customers, 65% of the customers say that if the brand, the luxury brand, is not represented well in the social network, I, don't, I think that this brand is out of fashion, and it's not so trustworthy for me anymore. And it's for seasons, so it's really strange because this brand is really, let's say, well established, and the customers are really wealthy, and they say a little bit conservative. So, for example, in games advertising, uh, you can do your own uh, game or with, your with your brand inside, also you can advertise in games. This is also unusual for fashion brands, but because your audience is in it, you have to follow. Uh, the third point is the mobile applications, and it doesn't have to be exact the fashion-related application. For sure, when you've done your branded application, you put it in App Store, but then you need to introduce it, you, you need to promote it. And uh, you cannot go to your competitor to promote this application. So that's why you have to use all other different uh, sources. And it doesn't matter what topic it will be, it can be a web application or it can be an hour on the clock. Um, and the, 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 the first concept I want to, to describe is the RTB buying. It's not so, it's not so difficult, but I'll, I'll make it very simple. So the real-time meeting is a completely new approach to the buying the audience. It's not that you buy the audience on the exact site, it's not that you buy advertising on the exact site, but you buy the audience. For example, you say, I want to buy the women between 25 and 35 living in Moscow and interested in fashion and cars, and they have to be hey online shoppers. So the RTB ecosystem works like this. A lot of websites put the impressions in the big exchange, and the data management platforms collect the data about the users. You know that like big brands are watching you in the web. You know that you have a lot of traces in the web. So the web knows a lot about you, your gender, your age, your history of visiting the websites, the search queries, what have you bought, like last week or a couple of weeks, where, where you've been, for example, you, you were booked on Maldives, some tours or something like this. And you can create a campaign using the exact targeting parameters of the audience you need, and you don't, you don't need to know exactly where the advertising will be shown. For example, this person can go, I don't know, on his or on any, any site about the news, for example, or about the sport. But this 
person is exactly the target value that you need. So that's how this concept is, um, is working. Uh, the real-time bidding can attract customers to your site and you can generate the online sales. But also I want to, to, talk, uh, to tell you about the two other products. The one is lookalike audiences. For example, you have a lot of customers on your current site and your digital efforts done very well and you know that your customers are converted well into the online sales or in any other activities. What we can do? We can put a pixel on your site. We can understand what type of the audience is usually visiting your site. The age, the gender, the behavior. And then we can create a pattern and find a similar audience in Yandex, in Google, in Chipana, any other kind of sites that looks like your customers and show advertising to them. So for sure, this type of customers will be much better converted into online sales or the activities you need than just any other people in the back. The other product uh, that real-time bidding can um, give to you is retargeting. Retargeting is a product when we can uh, return back the audience to your site. You know for sure that when you've done a campaign, even in context advertising, only 3% of audience usually convert into online sales. And 97% of people, they're just gone. So you pay for them and they're gone. So retargeting can find those people on the web. Uh, I know for sure that a lot, of, a lot of you saw the banners that are following you in the web. Has someone seen some banners? For example, you were looking for some shoes and then they did, they, they, yeah. I see some people saying yes. So that, that's what retargeting is doing. And you know, I would have to say that it's 10 times more efficient than you just to, to, to see any banner. And sometimes you can even something put in the basket and then you forgot about it or you forgot your cart to put it on the table. But then the banner say to you, hi, this is your basket. We have your green shoes in the basket. Do you want to pay for it? Or you can even say, like, we have additional 5% discount for this last week, for example. That's what retargeting is doing. But also I want to mention that it was a study made by Publicis that uh, online advertising in banner, the 3% generate pure online sales. It's that you can measure by online sales. But also 11% is offline sales in your shops that are directly influenced by online, directly, directly generated. So for example, if the person uh, was on your website and she was playing with some rules, or for example, for the car, she was constructing a visual that she wants to buy, and then she went to the shop and she buy it. And then it's also 20% of offline sales that were influenced indirectly. So it means that the digital advertising, the banner advertising, it's not only about giving the direct online sales, but it's also generating a lot of offline revenues for you. And also I want to, I want to talk a little bit about the mobile. So this is the US advertising market. So the mobile now goes really first because all the experience started in mobile. So if you look at the mobile shopping, 65% of people started in the smartphone then they go to the web, and then they go to the planchette. So, um, usually we, we talk a lot about mobile on any conferences, and we say like, oh, it's so small, I mean, yes, of course, everywhere in the United States, in the UK, it's so big, and of course we will go to mobile somewhere, but not now. But if you look at the curve, this is Tina's Gallup, Comscore has the same figures, so if you look at the curve, this is a mobile internet in Russia, we can see, for example, that in February this year, in Moscow, is already around 40% of people using mobile internet. And in whole Russia, this whole region, is 30%. So actually, a third of the country is already using mobile for internet. And for us, maybe it's obvious, we say, of course, yes. But even if you look at Milano, for example, look at the figures. This is my Kinsey study. It was made like six months ago. It's the capital of fashion, Milano. Uh, all the brands that were in this research, like Chanel and Prada, only 15% of fashion brands has mobile adopted sites, and only 20% has a mobile application. So 
it's not ratio. So in ratio, the percentage is really, really small. So we can see the huge gap between the consumption of the media as mobile and between the efforts of the brands, what they do in mobile. And also, I want to mention that only 40% of application has Android version, because everybody is saying that Apple is cool, everybody has iPhones. But if you look at the figures, Android has much more devices right now in Russia than iPhone. And actually, if you want to grow fast, first you have to do Android. iPhone is good for the image, for the brand, because usually more scale people use iPhone. But in terms of the massive audience, Android has much more high figures right now. Um, just some figures that I already said. I want also to point um, your attention about the price. If you look at the figures when you do your online campaign, if you look at the glossy magazine site, and then, then you understand how much the peak will be, it will be between 10 and 15, sometimes it can be even $50. If you buy the audience through the RTB buying, it can be two, five dollars. But mobile advertising costs now one dollar or even less. Because it's not a lot of campaigns right now, so the competition is not very high. And it's a really good chance to find a great audience for a cheaper price right now in the mobile advertising, in mobile uh, web. So in terms of the banners, there is a really standard banner. When you look on your screen, you have a small banner on, up on the page and down on the page, but sometimes there are floating banners that follow the screen. But you can say that for my luxury brands, I need to have a big picture and you cannot see anything here. But also mobile can give you a lot of opportunities. For example, you can have a rich media full screen banner. Before downloading the application, there is a big picture of the brand. Then you can have a video, you have different tabs here. You can even download the pictures, you can see the video, you can have the contacts. Actually, it's like kind of a mini site. So I just want to point that there is a lot of formats that can be used right now in mobile advertising and you can really have to think of it as a potential interesting channel. Um, the question that is always asked is what about the brand house? Because we cannot really control where the advertising will be because it's, you know that in, in Google and App Store they have around 800,000 applications. And all these applications can be used for your advertising in Russia. Because you don't have to advertise necessarily in Russian applications only, because you just need Russian audience. But first of all, the digital is really democratizing now. Uh, it's all about accessibility. So if you want to go closer to your customer, you, you, you have to go to the mobile, to the RTB, to all this technology buying. And the other thing is that the industry leaders who provide the traffic in the mobile web, like Google, Yandex, like Apple Store and Android Market, they always have moderation for all the mobile applications and sites that are going in this kind of systems. So actually they do a lot of work to take care about the digital environment, so you don't have to be scared to go there. That's what I want to point. Thank you very much. Thank you.